Next question is from Iron Mikey 19. What did 2020 teach you? Oh, God. A lot, of, a lot of stuff. I'll tell you, the biggest thing I learned was mm. that for sure, uh, lizard people are running the world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, every conspiracy I've ever heard. They were, uh, in, a, they were in a video game. Yeah, <laughs> like, like this. Yeah, I, you know, I kind of thought it, but now I know for sure. Like, this is, <laughs> there's a bunch of weird shit going yeah, on. Yeah, 2020 uh, made me despise uh, politics even more than oh I already God, did. Yes. Like, you thought I, you couldn't hate it more. I thought I hated it. Yeah, I thought I already hated on, it on enough. But uh, yeah, after 2020, I, I hate it even I more. I couldn't believe people could get so tribal again. Like yeah. it was just so fascinating to watch, uh, you know, how easily people just are manipulated. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy for me. I mean, okay. Now all joking aside, um, and this is a lesson that anytime something's challenging, I think is there for you. It doesn't mean you're going to learn it. Um, and that's acceptance. Acceptance, uh, is just constant, right? You accept every single moment and 2020 I had to, you know, I I'm I am I'm a, I'm a bit of a hypochondriac, right? And mm -hmm. so, what was what, what were we dealing with? A pandemic, and so initially, uh, I was very anxious about it, and so I had to accept yeah. that, and then I had to accept that I'm not going to be able to travel and do certain things, and I had to accept that I couldn't see family members as much as I wanted to, and just over and over again, I had to accept kind of things as they were. But it is a valuable lesson because life, you know, and, and this is me being like, you know, super wise about it. But the reality is I struggle with it. Mm -hmm. But the wise part of me is like, look, you know, life is about accepting yeah. what you can't control. Anything can happen. And I, and I think that was very, very much displayed. Uh, uh, you know, 2020 was just nobody saw it coming, you know, but guess what? That's life. You know, you, you got to just always know there's uncontrollables that uh, could happen at any moment. And you know, we were we were definitely living in really like it. You, you go back and appreciate like where you were leading into that year. Yep. Yeah, I, I, you know, what I, what I really took away was I, the I value human connection on another level than I probably ever did. Like, you know, I I miss our staff being in here like on a, on a daily basis. I didn't, you know, we have this virtual business now. And it made me realize how much I don't want that. Like, I don't want a business that's ran where, you know, all the people that work for it can Zoom in and Skype and stuff mm, like that. It's and not we, the same. It's not the same. I mean, half of what makes this this business fun and enjoyable is actually creating jobs for all these people, mm -hmm. seeing them work every single day in a, in a fitness business that's fun. And I like to think that we're fun bosses to work with and for. And so... Yeah, I really, I really miss it. And plus, it's really hard to build a culture and motivate people. You know, this is business has slowed down the last like three to four months. And, you know, it's uh, normally when you get your people in here, you can kind of rally the troops and get them fired up and motivated to like really take it up to the, take it up a notch. It's really hard to do over a Zoom call to to make that type of same connection that you make that I would make when I would walk with a st staff member outside for 10 minutes and talk about their family and what's going on with them. Like, it's just not the same doing that over a telephone or a Zoom yeah. call. So I really value that. And that's on the work uh, side. And then also I, I value that more now than ever with the family side. Like So um, it definitely kicked up my communication with all my siblings and family. So I'm talking more to them than I ever have because I miss them. I miss being able to get together and it be okay that all of us you know, congregate in the same house and, and hang out and be together. So... I find myself valuing that more. And so when we kind of get out of this, I think that I'll, I'll make an effort as like one of the leaders in the family to try and get us together more often because you never know when it could disappear mm -hmm. and we can't. So mm -hmm. um, it taught me that. It also taught me too, like luckily I've kind of gone and I've shared this on the podcast, like my, you know, my story with finances, like my insecurities of it early in my life and then working so hard to get to a certain point and, and then trying to, uh, you know, or spending all my money uh, to look the part of being very successful to kind of coming full circle where, you know, now I'm almost like a miser, right? So I feel like uh, this, you never know when something like this is going to happen. And part of why uh, this time didn't really stress me out as much as I've had some friends and people connected to me uh, was because I was prepared for it. You know, financially I was. Financially, I uh, have been better with my money in the last you know five to eight years than I ever have. And honestly, where we were, like looking at like looking at the worst case scenario what could happen. Oh my God, nobody buys any mind pump programs anymore. Listeners, stop listening. Will I be okay? And the reality was like, yeah, it will be totally fine. We'll be all right. It would suck. 
but uh, I wouldn't wouldn't be wondering how we were going to pay our bills or keep things going. So, you know, it just taught me the value of that, of making sure that, you know, you're not living this paycheck to paycheck and you're thinking that, you know, even if it's a great ride right now and money's coming in and you're doing well, that can all end mm-hmm. in, a, in a single snap of the fingers. And so to be thinking that with forward thinking always and that thinking that this could end, I think that a lot of people were woken up with that, that are, especially your entrepreneurs out there that were operating businesses that did not have enough income to go. And that, you know, it's a hard thing to say to somebody who is really struggling to keep their lights on right now. But that is one of the things that, you know, a lot of the economists were saying was just like, man, you know, as, as a country, we've been, we've been taught to that, you know, debt is totally okay. and, And living paycheck to paycheck and on credit cards and, you know, it's, it's fine. We're just a different, it's different today than it was in our parents, at parents' time, you know, like I, I remember hearing that uh, Dave Ramsey conversation about his, his lesson from his dad who would, you know, he would be, they would be hammering or uh, pulling apart nails from a deck and his dad would be saving the, the, the nails, you know, mm. cause he doesn't know if he'll, because he came from the great depression time of when he couldn't even afford to buy a nail. And so just having that mentality where you would just throw that away today. Right. So oh, yeah. You know, trying to trying to reframe things like that just because things are good financially for the time is to not get get out of control with your spending and thinking that it'll never end. In fact, having a mindset that this could end tomorrow, and if it were to, what should I be doing with my finances? Mm, very good. 